<laughs> you son of a bitch. How are you? PCU Frank Call Underground Radio. The following program is intended for mature audiences. Katie K is the biggest stupid gay fuck in the entire universe. KDK is lunatic fringe. Hey, DK, prankster extraordinaire. The internet or the uh, retard fucker. Yep. Hello, fuck you. Fuck you. Hey, no, fuck you. Fuck you, you fucking fuck. You are like, yeah, I, 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 you are one of the people I worship when it comes to like prank phone calls. I suffer when he bites me. He bites me in my vagina. When I'm walking and he sees all the dog, he right away, he jump on my vagina because he gets so crazy. He doesn't know who I am. Okay, space cadets, prepare to hurt. Go through the cosmos in today's turgid episode. Oh, for fuck's sake, just cue the goddamn song already. Jesus Christ. You'll probably get sweaters, underwear, and socks. Enough of that. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of KDK's Lunatic Fringe, an unplanned and announced edition, because I'm simply in the mood. So there you go. It's a Monday night at 10:07 of the p.m., December 11th. Just so everybody realizes that we're live right now. I'm here, and I'm going to do a little uh, a little experiment. I'm going old school. Instead of drinking for tonight's show, I've decided to uh, we're going to smoke some cotton silk. <laughs> 
Honey, would you like to come smoke cotton silk? <laughs> I must admit uh, to everyone, I've already smoked a little co cotton silk already. It's it's great stuff if you live out on a farm. You know what it's like smoking the cotton silk out behind the barn. <laughs> yes. Cotton silk is that stuff? Uh, I don't know. Corn silk. Smoke. Huh? Yes. Well, so my dad says, because he's that kind of person. Welcome to the show. It's going to be sort of a Christmas spectacular, because I have all sorts of Christmas music and uh, clips and comedy that I can play tonight, and tons of holiday-related prank calls, that some of which have never been heard before, just because I always forget to do this and do a Christmas show. But uh, And we're also going to try to do some live prank calls. So I have a phone card already. And uh, I have some numbers that, that I can call already, but if you have somebody that you would like us to call, you need to go to the chat room at kdkprankcalls.com or pcradio.com. Click on the link for the chat, and uh, a cool, nifty PCU-branded chat Java thing there. Or if you're an IRC user, it's irc.lazy-net.de, and you'll find us in the room entitled PCU, and you can double-click on me, KDK, and give me your thoughts and ideas, whatever you feel that you have to contribute tonight. <laughs> so what are you doing? Feeding the cats? Oh, okay. I thought you were smoking. Can you do me a favor? You smoked earlier, now you're hungry. Can you do me a huge favor? Can you wash the water pipe? I'll do, I'll do a bong hit on the air because that's more audio, if there's a proper word. I don't want to do something visual on, on radio. I don't want to throw it, because if it falls, it'll crack. <clears throat> yeah, so there you go. <laughs> and I have all sorts of nif nifty things like this I can play. Ooh, you're a holiday. Hi, we're the Bee Gees. Make it a holiday to remember this year. Don't drink and drive. Right. So, let me go to the... <clears throat> I'm not even drinking beer tonight, and I'm already Belgian. Hey, KDK, got any suggestions for a good RPG game for the PS2? Yeah, Final Fantasy XII. Definitely go get it. Um, <laughs> that's something I'm not going to read on the air. Something very positive, but I'm not going to read it on the air, because I don't want to be a negative little bitch tonight. I'm going to try to uh, re remove myself from the drama, as I've so long been trying to do. And try to have some fun here tonight. So, let's listen to a prank call, a Christmas prank call, which was done, um, shit, I don't even remember, probably two or three years ago. And, uh, it's called Jill's Christmas Caroling. Hello? Have yourself. Christmas, make the youth die gay. From now on, your troubles will be far away. How are you doing, dear? This is Mrs. Rosenthal, and I'm just calling random numbers around the neighborhood, trying to bring some holiday cheer into everybody's life. How, how are the holidays treating you so far? You're speechless. I know you've never had anybody display this, this, this level of kindness to you before, but it's okay. Would you like me to sing a little more? Salim. Hello. Listen, I know you're still there because I didn't hear you hang up yet. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy, um... Ramadama Ding Dong. Hello. Okay, we're back. And uh, the bong is clean. You wash it out good? Because it was sitting like for fucking ever. Okay, so where is the corn silk? Are you going to smoke the bomb? Well, at least one hit. <laughs> yeah, 
Yes. Smoke the silk. Can you do me a favor and close the curtains behind you? <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> that was kind of weak, but I didn't want to kill myself yet. Until recently, it's been a while since I've smoked corn silk, so my tolerance is very low, so it doesn't take me much. Right? <clears throat> okay. Uh. Welcome, Christmas. Bring your cheer. Cheer to all who's far and near. Christmas Day is in our grasp, so long as we have hands to clap. And it's also Hanukkah, and like, um, when does Hanukkah start Friday? The 15th, I think. I'm an informed Gentile. I think this is the 15th. Is it one of those holidays that changes depending on the day of the week, or is it always the same day every year? I have absolutely no idea. Is that like a Thanksgiving or a... I have no idea. <laughs> I'm spending Hanukkah in Santa Monica, wearing sandals, lighting candles by the sea. I spent Shavuos in East St. Louis, a charming spot, but clearly not the spot for me. Those eastern winters, I can't endure them. So every year I pack my gear and come out here till Purim, Rosh Hashanah. I spend in Arizona and Yom Kippur way down in Mississippi. But in December, there's just one place for me. Amid the California flora, I'll be lighting my menorah like a baby in his cradle. I'll be playing with my dreidel, spending Hanukkah in Santa Monica by the sea. I'm spending Hanukkah in Santa Monica, wearing sandals, lighting candles by the sea. I spent Shavuos. In East St. Louis, a charming spot, but clearly not the spot for me. Those eastern winters, I can't endure them. So every year I pack my gear and come out here to Purim, Rosh Hashanah. I spend in Arizona and Yom Kippur way down in Mississippi. But in December, there's just one place for me. Amid the California flora, I'll be lighting my menorah like a baby in his cradle. I'll be playing with my dreidel. Here's the Judas Maccabeus. Boy, if he could only see us spending Hanukkah in Santa Monica by the sea. There you go, the great. Is he late? I don't know. Is Tom Lehrer still alive? The great Tom Lehrer. Yeah, that's that's really old. I'm sure that that's uh, even well before my time. Even as old and decrepit as I am. And he was old then. Yeah, <laughs> that's like fifties or sixties, I think. You know, you're getting old when you're listening to music from the fifties. Well, at least I started with Homo Christmas. That's punk. <laughs> Kane Green says he's spamming, so make it good. Don't you don't need to spam people. We don't want to trick people into listening. <laughs> We want people to know exactly what they're getting in for. Well, mean Gay prank calls. Mean, uh, they usually do. Now, how would I spam my show? If I were to go into a chat room trying to spam my own show, how would I try to say something and word it so that people would be motivated to want to go there? Because if it's just go here and then an address, people will never go. They'll assume it's like you're a bot or... <laughs> What? I would say, I would say for funny prank calls and... But, what if I don't do any prank calls? Okay, so I would spam and say, listen to the, uh... Listen to the crazy guy, uh, smoking weed on the air. <laughs> That's all I would say. <laughs> or corn silk. <laughs> Actually, corn silk would probably be better. Corn silk could probably just get, get me just as high, probably. I don't know, I've never smoked corn silk. Anyone out there ever smoked corn silk? And I just go, what the fuck is corn silk? Yeah, smoking corn silk. Really smoking corn silk? 
<laughs> I think corn silk is that stuff that you have to pull off the corn when you shuck it. I think if you dry it out, you can smoke it, and it gives you a buzz. I don't know, but that's what the the old time farmer people, like my dad, say. I remember smoking the corn silk out behind the hog pen. <laughs> Yeah, I hear that too. Smoking banana peels. That's a song by uh, uh, who did that song? Smoking banana peels. I remember the dead milkman. That's it. Smoking banana peels. The dead milkman. <laughs> See, now I'm zoning out because I'm stoned and nobody's sending me any numbers. I I got a phone card. I actually went and got a phone card because I didn't want to have to leech off of anybody tonight. But uh, I do need some numbers. I got some numbers that I can call, but they're old standby numbers like a Daphne dugout and Long Dong and stuff like that. We could do some Christmas prank calls to them. What can I say to Long Dong for Christmas? I don't know. I can be a foreign relative who's trying to explain that he's going to mail himself to Long Dong in a package. <laughs> a Shintoist holiday? I don't know. We'd have to ask Ted. I don't, do Buddhists have holidays? Isn't it the same thing? I probably just mortally offended uh, Ted by comparing Shintoism to Buddhism. What is Shinto? Oh, yeah, but that's like, I know there's like a uh, Chinese religion, or like Orient. You don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> or Buddhism, or whatever the fuck you... See, you just said it's the same thing too, hopefully it is. <laughs> anyway, it's your turn to smoke uh, the corn silk, so here is that, and that. And I'll lean in for the sound effects. <laughs> Actually, I'm just playing a file. <laughs> I found a, a, fi a file of a bong, and that's all I'm going to play and pretend I'm smoking right now. Or Keith is smoking corn silk right now. <sighs> yeah, there you go. Y you feel better? I'm so happy I don't have to work tomorrow. The main reason why I wanted to go on the air tonight, because I'm going to go on for a little while, and then I'm going to... I'm gonna smoke some corn silk while I'm here, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to go uh, play Final Fantasy XII. <laughs> I love that game so much. It's like the most fun I've had with Final Fantasy since Part Seven. It's a great game. Hello, kitty. You want to eat a cough? Go. <laughs> Milkman requested that we get one of the cats high tonight, so I'll ask the people in the chat room. If you want to, you can vote for, just vote by typing the name. You can vote for Sebastian or Julian. So, uh, whoever wins, or if nobody says anything, I'll just pick a cat. I'll probably just pick a cat anyway. <laughs> but people in the chat room can vote. <laughs> you want to vote? We light up, well, well, I'm saying, when, when, we get, when we decide which cat, yeah. we'll give them a uh, light up, uh, fill the bong full of uh, the smoke from the corn silk. Yeah. And then shotgun it to him. What do you mean shotgun it to him? Your mouth right here. Oh. And won't the water just go flying? No, it'll shoot the smoke into their face. I think it would just make the water bubble out. Have you tried this before? Okay, if you think you know what you're doing. <laughs> do we need to put a towel down for you because you're trying to shotgun uh, corn soak to the cat? <laughs> It's horrible. This is the world's worst show ever. We are the world's <laughs> worst influences. It's horrible. The yeah, SPCA people are going to be knocking on the door. And the, they have to get the cat psychic in to talk to the cat. And the cat will be saying, no, they're so cool, man. <laughs> it's so boring sitting around, but they get me high. And I just look at my paw for an hour. I'm not bored at all. I played with a piece of lint for two and a half hours, <laughs> for Christ's sake. <laughs> what the fuck else am I going to do right here? Yeah. Oh, the cats have toys everywhere. It's a very small space, though, so I, I would imagine if I were one of them, I'd get bored. It's place he was crying. But if you want to let him outside, he's terrified. Well, not the outdoors. Anyway, I'm going to play a, a, a Christmas prank call. I have this whole huge file of prank calls that me and Kevin did over the years on Christmas Eve. We've done that a couple times where we all get together and right after Christmas Eve, everybody answers their phone. 
I figured this out early on because it's the only time you'll get people expecting a call that late at night. So uh, a couple times we got together and we, we just made like steady one after another New Year's Eve prank calls. And uh, some of them are aggravating, some of them are fun, and one of them was actually to Kevin's mama, <laughs> one of my personal favorites. It was, uh, it, I, I think it might be the last Kevin's mama prank call. I think it might be the last one that we got off to her before she died. You think? I can't remember exactly when she died, but this is... Um, It's watching Dick's ball drop. Hello? Hello. Hey, I just want to wish you an early Happy New Year. Oh, thank you. And I do the same to you, too. Thank you, Mommy. Very, very happy return. Very happy, happy what? Returns of the day. <laughs> Returns of the day? What's that mean? That's the no fashion saying. Oh, I'm, not old, I'm not old fashioned, so. <laughs> may, may good things happen to you. May good, may good things happen to you too, dear. Yes. Yeah. So, what are you guys doing? I'm um, just listening to, to wait till the ball goes down. The sad part is, we always used to make fun of her because she's always complaining that she's dying. Truth is, she really was. <laughs> You can never get the straight answer what's wrong with her out of Kevin. He would say she had her leg amputated because she used to turn these Doritos all the time. And you know, <laughs> I love that call. He said it became gangrenous or it was something to do with uh, diabetes or something. He, she lost a, a leg, not just even a foot, like the leg down to the knee. She did you, lost. Did you ever put the, uh, the pictures of you and me talking with the light along the flight? No, because that would, that's, that's too cool. <laughs> You just think about that. Well, I guess he's not a friend of ours anymore, but at the time, it would be so cruel to be, like, posting pictures of us posing with his mom's fake leg. <laughs> I guess it's safe for me to put those pictures up now, wouldn't you think? Put them up in the floor. I think they might have been up in, in a very early stage. And then I took it down, like, after people actually started coming to the site and seeing things, and I had to, like, apologize for shit I put up and stuff. <laughs> You watching Dick's Balls Drop? No, I'm watching um, Fuck at Las Vegas. Watch Dick's Ball Drop? No, we're gonna watch Las Vegas Ball Drop. No, 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 Mom. Watch, huh? Dick, watch Dick's Ball Drop. <laughs> okay. You gonna I will. It? Will you? Yeah, I will. What are you gonna do? No, no, I'm not. I'm you're not clowning me into that. What? No. <laughs> what are you talking about? I know you're taping me. <laughs> well, you know we're taping you. Yes, yes. Why do you think we're taping you? Because you always do. No, you don't. I because called you to wish you a happy new year. We wouldn't tape that. It'd be happy a blooper reel. Year. Goodbye. It'd be a, it'd be a blooper reel. Coming fight. home. Ah, <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll come back after you watch what you're gonna watch. Now, what are you gonna watch? I'm gonna watch. Ricky, um... No, his name is Dick Clark, so what are you gonna do? Dick Clark. You're gonna watch Dick's Ball Drop? Yeah. Say that? No! <laughs> Why not? Bye! Oh, come on, don't say goodbye, you're don't on the air. Don't call me back, I've gotta go. Ma, you're on the air. You're broadcasting on the internet. Tell us what you wanna... I don't wanna say that. Ma... I think the point of the call was we wanted to get her to say... We, we wanted to do, like, a promo for PCU. So we, we wanted her to say, this is Kevin's mama, and I'm watching Dick's ball drop <laughs> on PCU or something like that. But uh, <laughs> she knew at this point we were recording her and posting it online, and people were laughing about it. And Kevin's friends would come over and like be like referencing them to her. And anyway, <laughs> broadcasting on the internet. What do you want to say? Very, very, very many happy returns. Happy New Year to everybody. Mom. Hey, this year Mom. be the best. Yeah, for everybody, <laughs> and let everybody get a good job. <laughs> yeah, I know. You really want me to get a job, don't you? Yes, I do. Mom. Yes. What medications are you on? Ah, uh, cheese doodles. You got cheese doodles? <laughs> Mom, say I'm on cheese doodles. Cheese doodles. <laughs> 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 Is that what you want to say on the internet? Yeah. He's <laughs> I love that. That's a classic line. Key doodles. 
Yeah, that was a witty comeback for an old lady who was so highly medicated. You're wondering what's off about her? She was very highly medicated due to legitimate medical conditions. Yeah, yeah. And now, I would like to think that if I were Kevin, I would treasure having these recordings. Because I wish I had more recordings of, like, me acting like a jackass with my mom. Because it, it's something to remember them by, and it's something you can look back and laugh on. Yeah, but now. If I were Kevin, I wouldn't, want to, I wouldn't want to remember the one where he made her cry. No, well, you know. You gotta take the good with the bad. <laughs> Either it's all okay, or none of it is. <laughs> Make you do it again. Jeez, girl. Hey, I want to see Dick's ball drop. Goodbye. <laughs> Say I want to see Dick's ball drop. Ball drop. Say I want to see Dick's like, ball drop. No. Say I want. Say, mom, listen to me. I don't okay. want to say you're better than me. All right, hold on. Say, mom, say Kevin's mother goes to KDKPrankCalls.com. No, mom, say KDKPrankCalls.com. KDKPrankCalls.com. KDKPrankCalls.com 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 Alright, that works. Thank you. You can go now. Bye. Bye. And there you go. You should totally make a promo on that. I did. On the version of that that's on the site, the, uh, the lower quality version has a tag on the end. Where it's just her isolated going, KDK, <coughs> prank calls dot com. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I should have played that version instead. I forgot that little bit at the end there. But there you go. That was Kevin's mama. And the whole point of that is uh, we used to do these New Year's Eve calls. And maybe I'll do it again this year. Because you call people after midnight, they're expecting friends and family, relatives, to be calling and wishing them merry. So they always answer, and they're usually happy, and they're very often drunk, because it is New Year's Eve. So it's like the perfect night. It's like it's like uh, Halloween is supposed to be when the doors to hell open. Well, the doors to prank them open on uh, New Year's Eve. Because <laughs> you got a, a huge audience of people who are awake because it's New Year's, probably drunk, and waiting for people to call. So it's awesome. <laughs> Here. The only thing that sucks is when Kevin was actually fucked up when he was here. So he kept doing the same bit for every car where he's just screaming, going, Happy New Year! I can't feel my face! <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> so I'll be playing those in, in, in dispersed liberally throughout the night, but I'm still waiting for phone numbers to come in. If nobody's going to send me any numbers... <laughs> Yeah, McKenty wants me to prank Super 8 Hotels, and um, after you get the room, say you want some black pussy, ask for a black escort, etc., whatever. Is that a legit number? It's 1-800-800-8000. That's got to be the most <coughs> valuable phone number in the world. <laughs> That'll make a great isolation. You son of a bitch! Are you PCU prank call underground radio? Like I'm gonna call Lorm Dong and tell him that I'm a relative of his from China and I'm gonna mail myself to him in a box. <laughs> I wonder if he could. If I, I wonder if I could explain it, doing a wacky voice, to the point where he could understand what I'm getting at. You think? How much English does that guy comprehend? I think he comprehends a lot more than he lets on. <laughs> no, it got to be somebody from China. So it got to be like, I. How do you do a Chinese voice? I float in box. That sounds like the Spanish voice. <laughs> Maybe that'll make it funnier. <laughs> Why are Spanish people calling from China, mailing themselves in a box? <laughs> yeah, but you can also do a different voice to make it make it even more elusive. Yeah. I can be like. Yes, this is more than many of us in this box. <laughs> like that Ricky Smiley call, remember? Uh, I'm here at Arby's. How long till we get to San Jose? <laughs> Everybody's locked in a crate and they're mailing themselves to Long Dong. That's a great premise. Oh, too bad he's too uh, out of it. I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. Because he wants to hang up so fast because so many people harass him. <laughs> I wonder I miss the old days where it was just me and he would curse me out because it didn't happen that often and he built up all the anger and now he just like click hang up it's like so routine to him now it's no fun anymore yeah, 
Huh? Got any more no. I don't have it. Well, that was the only number coming in. The one for the Super 8 motels. <clears throat> I'm trying to do Christmas theme prank calls. Oh, I just remembered another Christmas call I have to put in my Christmas file. The one that me and Neo did where uh, it was a Christmas dildo. It, it was called Christmas dildo, but it was something about uh, she got a package and it was like wrapped like a Christmas present. And that was that the time that I pulled out like the real dildo for sound effects? I think it might have been. <laughs> I, or I had something here that vibrated. I can't. Re I don't think it was a sex toy. They wouldn't have been out here. But unless I brought it out here on purpose, like before the call. I don't know, I can't remember, because I was probably fucked up at the time. Probably getting drunk instead of high like I ought to be. It's much better to smoke. Hello? Hello? Hi, Tom? Tom? Who is this? This is Jessica. We were supposed to meet at the Red Baron bar last night, and you never showed. What did you say, Jessica? I said you were supposed to meet me at the Red Baron Bar. You know where that is. Yeah? And you never met me. Who is this? This is Jessica. Jessica Gilger? Yeah. What is your last name, Jessica? Gilger. Gilger. Okay. Yeah. And, and what, what can I do for you? I said that you, that you were supposed to meet me at the Red Baron Bar, and you never did. I set you up at the Red Bar? Red Baron Bar. Uh, I can actually repeat myself so many times. Are you that deaf? I, uh... Let me check just for a minute. I can't hear very good. Would you would you please repeat that? I said you were supposed to meet you were supposed to meet me at the Red Baron Bar last the night. The Red Deli you never Bar. Did. Baron Bar. You know, as in the Red Baron. The Red Baron. Yeah. Well, what can I do for you now? Well, I was just calling to see if you were actually going to meet me tonight. I called you last night, and no one answered. I left a, a message. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay, what did you want now? What can I do for you? Well, are, are we going to meet up? Yes or no? I'm trying to meet actually, you know. you need help? No. Well, I'll tell you what. Would you Do please... Do you want the penny twister package or not? My phone no isn't call. very good, Jessica. Jessica? Whatever. You know what I'm saying. My phone is making a little bit of noise. Would you speak up a little louder, please? I said that you were supposed to meet me at the Red Baron Bar and that I was supposed to give you the, twi the Titty Twister package behind it. And you never showed. Do you want it or not? What package? The I didn't leave any package any place. I said that I was supposed to give it to you. What? Uh, never mind. No, go ahead. Repeat it over again, please. I want to hear. Edgar, can you please get on the phone, please? No, this guy's really pissed off. Hello? Hello, Tom? Hello? How are you doing, Tom? <coughs> this okay, is Ed. <coughs> this is Ed. Your sister's grandpa. How are you doing? Okay. Now listen, you were supposed to meet Jessica at the Red Baron Bar to pick up your package. <laughs> she, she received some of your mail. 
Jessica, and who is talking now? Uh, this is Ed. <coughs> the last name is Rosenthal. I'm I'm her grandpa. Oh, you're Jessica's grandpa. Mm, yeah. And and I didn't hear anything about a package. I got in my slippers and my robe, and I drove her down there because she said she had to meet you there and give you back your package. She had to give me back my package. Yes, your at package. At the Red Jelly Bar. She want she wanted your package. She wanted to give you your package. And what is in the uh, package? Uh, we, well, we haven't opened it yet. Do, do, do you want us to open it for you, tell you what's inside? Because I'm a little curious myself. I'm, oh, excuse I'm not, me. I'm not expecting any package. Was it in the mail? It, it, it was in the mail. And no, UPS dropped it off, Grandpa. Yes, yes, it was the UPS. You you live you live at uh, one nineteen thirty. We live at one nineteen twenty eight. They they brought it to the wrong place. You see. Oh. But Jessica's lonely, so she wanted to make a date of it. She wanted to meet you at the bar and drop off your package, have a drink with you, and I don't know. Oh well, I don't drink, and and I'm married. Uh, this is well, see, there you go, Jessica. He's married, so you need to you need to find somebody else. And you just give no, this. No, but I want him. Give this man his package. I want him. I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna tell you what's inside. Is that okay? This, listen, I got the package here. I'm I'm gonna open it. I'm looking inside. Uh, oh my God! It's a dildo. What is a dodo? It's a dildo. It's a, a, a rubber penis. Oh, my God. It's addressed to Tom and Shirley. And it comes from, it says, Adam and Eve. What? Well, do you, you want this thing? I'm assuming it was for Shirley. Were you buying it as a gift? Is oh, oh I bet it's a Christmas present because it has bells on the bottom. No, who is this at this late date of, of time of night? Jessica just got back from the Red Baron barn. We're, we're um, apparently. I don't know where that is, but it's almost midnight. What are you calling about? Listen, there's a bell on the bottom. You hear it? There's, I don't there's think bells on it. It's a Christmas dildo. If this is, uh, I'm hang. Tom, just hang up. They're crazy. You, you don't have to be embarrassed. You know, Jessica don't has several of her, her like own. I'm not holding this package just for anything, okay? I'll have Jessica stop by and leave it on your doorstep, okay? Because it's already it paid Jessica? for and it's not it's ours. I don't need a dildo. Well, you get off this it, phone and don't you ever call me again. You want, do you want the dildo or not? I don't want anything from you. Well, you paid for it. Somebody paid for it, apparently. I you know. I, I bet you're sure. Maybe Shirley bought it as a surprise for you. Grandpa. No, she didn't. Grandpa. Are... Yes, Jessica. Okay, that's from my what? private dash, and I had it. I had it on eBay under Adam and Eve, and I was supposed to meet up with him to give it to him behind the bar, but he never showed. So this whole thing is just a ruse. You're sending him a dildo just to trick him into meeting you at the bar. Yeah. And what is Jessica's last name? Rosenthal. I don't know any Jessica Rosenthal. Yeah, you, you do. You people are nuts. Please get off my phone. Before. We've talked he before. said Rosenthal. Surely they're just. He said it was for your mother. The balls are bells. Line. It's a nice little touch. Can you hear? Hey, I'm sorry. You people get Grandpa, off my line. Grandpa, there's also supposed to be a French tickler and also two of the little. Well, I, I haven't the dug to the bottom of the box yet. There might be there more stuff in there under the styrofoam popcorn. Okay. <laughs> you son of a bitch! Are you PCU prank call underground radio? Okay, you're gonna smoke some more corn silk. Uh, 
I don't know who won from the chat room because I haven't been paying attention. But Julian's gonna get it because he's sitting right here already. So Julian. There's nothing in there. <laughs> I got a big head shake off that. That was funny. <laughs> I wish you had a visual on that. You just shotgun the cat. You blew into the carb hole and shot all the smoke directly into his face. Yeah. So there you go. Ted is so going to kick us off PCU because this is like cruelty to animals. Well, from the animal's point of view, he's like, wow, it's so much cooler now. <laughs> yeah, really. But he likes smoke anyway, so. Are you proud of yourself? Now the cat is high. <laughs> oh, man. That's why nobody listened to us. This show sucks. Everybody's wondering what corn silk is. I guess we could Google it. I'm not going to. I don't think it'd be terribly interesting. Isn't this organized? I love this. <laughs> the world's stupidest internet radio show. And I wouldn't have it any other way. If Christmas shopping tires you out, listen to this. Oh, uh, hey, Mom. Yo. Yo, Keith wants to know if I should bring home a, an after Christmas knickknack. Yeah. Yeah? Is it, it's not a, a bad thing, is it? Um, I'm not sure. It looks like two Greek boys, like they're on a Christmas ornament, and it doesn't look like they're wearing much clothes, but I mean, it doesn't look that bad. It's a Christmas ornament. You know how we have the little mini Christmas tree? Uh huh. It looks like it could fit on there. Uh -huh. Is it Huh? Are you walking home or are you staying there? Oh, I'm walking home. Don't worry about Can that. You have a night? Huh? You don't want to sleep there? Nah, no, I'll walk home. You sure? Yeah. But they, but Keith wants to know if I should bring home a Christmas ornament. If you want to. They're little naked Greek boys. I don't care. You don't care? No. Okay. Do you mind if their penises are hanging low? Get out of here. No, I mean, I'm not I even don't kidding. I want them. You don't want them? No, thanks. But Keith said you like them. Oh, no, goodbye. What? Hold, hold on. Mom? Kevin, I hate this. You hate you what? You such a pig. I'm a pig? Kevin, I but don't want to... I'm not the one that had this idea. It was Keith. I Keith, don't, I'm gonna, Keith gave me a green little Christmas ornament with Greek boys half naked on them with their penises hanging out and their testicles hanging low. It's not their penises, it's their testicles. And it says, Happy Holidays. Does that sound good to you? Mother? <laughs> hey pigs, I'm Judy Tanuta, the petite flower and love goddess. Oh, I want a love slave, that's right. Merry Christmas to all you love beasts, and to prove it's Christmas you must be a giver. Therefore you should give me all your worldly possessions. It can happen. <laughs> Now, you just bring up an important point, because uh, I played that Judy Tenuta thing, and you're like, what the fuck is this? I have the perfect piece of what the fuck audio that I'm going to play later tonight. It is the bomb. It's like, it ranks right up there with the vagina biting dog, and the crazy preacher, and the moment of truth guy. This is insane beyond belief. <laughs> well, and you have that to look forward to. Remind me if I forget. Remind me about um, Buttercup. That's the key word. The code word, today's code word is... Buttercup. <laughs> you ever played the, uh, the 70 nut thing? Um, no, I haven't played that one yet either. That's that's for another night. The one I want to play tonight is uh, something I actually had to grab it from the DVD myself because I watched the DVD and it was it was so amazing. I was like, oh, I have to keep this. <laughs> it was like an it was an outtake from a movie. I don't know why it was an outtake because it's brilliant, brilliantly insane. So you have that to look forward to. What you want to ask me, darling? PCU Prank Call Underground Radio. <laughs> you know, it, it struck me. I do all these uh, Jewish characters, the Rosenthal's, for so many years, and I know nothing about Judaism. Like, if Jill were to do a call where she's talking about Hanukkah, I wouldn't know what to say. But that might be funny, because I could be talking about uh, Santa and dreidels and stuff like that. Oh, hello, dear. Us Jews have to stick together. Jam and Jerry is uh, a, a bad DJ. The guy with no teeth that used to do on his, a show on Wild Bunch. 
He used to drive me nuts. I used to be endlessly fascinated with the sound of his voice because you could hear the fact that he had no teeth. Because he, he would be on the air. You, you know how people talk when, when, when they're using their gums. And I was like, how can he, how can he not know that we can tell he's, he doesn't have his teeth in? <laughs> no. That's another one of those things. I've called those, the people in that notebook have been called so many times that they're gun shy and they're not good subjects anymore. <laughs> West End Studios, yeah. That'd be funny. Call you want to call West End Studios? What do we complain about? Anything. <laughs> yeah, really. How the, how the doors... I rented a room there and there were used condoms under the bed. Well, they weren't used. Yeah. Maybe I, I ought to call and thank them for their complimentary service of a box of outdated condoms <laughs> unopened left under the bed. <laughs> You complain about why is running up and down the front of the building like Tarzan's gonna come swinging by? <laughs> That's right, that shit on the walkway. I didn't step in it, did I? No, no. no. But, you can just say you did. but there was like smeared dog shit on the stoop and stuff. <laughs> That's how low this place is. The, the, elevator, do the dogs the are drawn to shit to it. <laughs> the elevator broke down. Yeah, the elevator. I, I was afraid to ride the elevator in the first place, and you're like, oh, no, no, no. And then. <laughs> I didn't want to walk up the. Maybe it was closed because someone else after us plummeted to their death after we used it. I have some video of the West End Studios I ought to post. West End Studios was a, uh, a hostel that we stayed in uh, this past July. June. This, this past June. And uh, we made the huge mistake of letting Keith make the reservations. <laughs> no, actually, it was too late, so every room was gone. Oh, yeah. Because every 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 fag with the money from here to King, King Buck Two makes their way for the New York Gay Pride. There's like five million gays and lesbians everywhere. <clears throat> Faggots as far as the eye can see. Faggots down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this used to be orange groves. <laughs> It's funny that I bring that up because every year that we've gone, there's been this like 87 year old guy who's always there early, wandering around somewhere in the background, and then later on he's in the parade, barely schlepping his way through the heat. Uh, yeah, the guy's like 90. 90 <laughs> dressed up, old. dressed up in uh, leather. <laughs> well, looking like a gimp. Would you think your grandpa was cool if he went to a parade dressed in leather? <laughs> well, I don't think. Oh, I don't think he had children. Yeah, really. <clears throat> well, you never know, because that's what you did in the old days. Yeah, exactly, yeah. He just got married and had kids. Or became a priest. <laughs> what you want to ask me, darling? PCU, Front Call Underground Radio. I've only taken one hit so far. I'm very impressed with myself. But like I said, I'm a lightweight now. There was a good chunk of years between like 18 and 28 where I was stoned like literally every single day unless it was during like a month where I decided to quit because my tolerance was so high I had to quit for a little while. Huh? Yeah, I remember back then too when I had to do that. <laughs> yeah, now I don't have to worry about it. It's, if we were to get it all the time, yeah, but... You know what I actually used to have to do? Hide my weed on myself. Yeah, hide your weed on yourself. Yeah, hide my weed on myself. Otherwise, you smoke it all in one day because you get stoned and don't realize that those aren't cigarettes you're smoking. You're still smoking weed, <laughs> right? Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Or you, just, or you just don't stop smoking. Yeah. You gotta know when you're stoned. I'm only about... I'm barely there. I so need to smoke some more corn silk. Storm Shadow is here with numbers. Storm Shadow saves the day. I don't know who that is. He's always got some new, kitschy, creative name in the chat room, so that's good. Storm Shadow has Fernando and Lydia Navidad, Sandy and Wade Claus, Brian M. Rectanus. Rectanus. That's funny. Rectanus. <laughs> Brian Rectanus. That's a good porn name. <laughs> Okay, so now we got people we can call, but unfortunately I have to pee, and I have to smoke a little before we do that. So let's do this real quick. Let me play some music in the background. I'll play, like, the Charlie Brown theme or something. Something 
gay and bouncy. What? You want to request a song? Well, I'm going to be going to take a leak in a moment, so I'm going to smoke some corn, so I'll go take a leak and come back and do some prank calls. That is the uh, order of events to follow. <laughs> Just got another hit. Do I get a head shake? Yep. There we go. Little head shake. Wasn't that bad. Let's see if he gives me another one. Yep. Another head. Two head shakes. We gotta keep track. Keep an eye on him so we know if we get three out of him. <laughs> He's still now. He's just sitting there, like following the smoke. <laughs> Sort of like me. Anyway, you said you had a request. What did you want to hear? A Christmas song? The hat I got for Christmas is too big. The hat I got for Christmas is too big. It's nice, but my sombrero is too big. Is it raining? Is it snowing? I can't see where I am going, cause the hat I got for Christmas is too big. But ring the bells and beat the drum. Ring the bells and beat the drum. I ring the bells to be polite. But if I see that Santa Claus, I'm going to start a fight. The hat I got for Christmas is too big. Oh, it's nice, but my sombrero is too big. If you wonder why I shiver, I fell three times in the river. Cause the hat I got for Christmas is too big. But ring the bells and beat the drum. Ring the bells and beat the drum. I'll ring the bells, but I feel sick. Cause Mr. Santa Claus, you played on me a dirty trick. The hat I got for Christmas is too big. It's nice, but my sombrero is too big. If you think it's hot in Siam, you should be in here where I am. The hat I got for Christmas is too big. The hat I got for Christmas is too big. It's nice, but my sombrero is too big. Can't tell one thing from another. I got married to my brother. The hat I got for Christmas is too big. But ring the bells and beat the drum. Ring the bells and beat the drum. I'll ring the bells and say ole. But Mr. Senor Santa Claus, you spoil my holiday. Por qué such a sombrero grande, Santa Claus? Okay, we're back. That was the, the late great Mel Blanc doing Speedy Gonzales for the hat I got for Christmas is too big, requested by you, Keith. <coughs> now he's all cuddly and lovable because he's stoned and he's just pacing around and rubbing on things and looking to be pet. He looks very happy. I don't think the ASPCA has a case. <laughs> Okay, time to do some prank calls. Can you do me a favor? Hello. Hello, how are you doing, dear lady? It's Ed Rosenthal. Hello? Hello? It's Ed Rosenthal from 138. How are you doing, lovely? 
I listen, I'm calling because I wanted to see if you and your family would like to come Christmas caroling with us on the eve of Christmas. Hello? She doesn't want to... She doesn't want to... <laughs> She doesn't want to go caroling with Ed. What a what a party pooper. Should I call her back? No, nah, we'll leave her be. <laughs> Did I come on too strong? <laughs> uh, well, I thought it was funny. I guess that's all that matters. Get off the phone, you stupid bitch. PCU Frank Call Underground Radio. Hello. Hey. Sandy. Yes, yes. How are you doing? It's Maurice. Who? I'm a friend of Dave's, and I'm just calling to see if you would like to come with the rest of us here on Oak Lake Drive for Christmas caroling. December oh. 24th, maybe oh. around 7 or 8 in the evening. Actually, I won't be able to. Oh, you, you simply must come with us. There's about <laughs> 200 of us. Oh my gosh. It's going to be on the news. There's so many of us. We're going to go from door to door, and we're going to sing for several moments, and stop for photo ops and, and camera angles, and then move on. Well, where are you starting at? At the bottom of the hill. At the and bottom of the hill? And we're going to walk our way up. Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? Actually, um, I have to work, so I don't get off work till late. Oh, well... So maybe we'll be passing by your place by the time you get home, and maybe you'll come out and pose for the cameras and act all happy and that sing with us for several moments. That would be fantastic. I would love that. That's awesome. Okay, you guys, you said you're starting at what time? We're going to start at 7, but we'll probably okay. be going until midnight, and there'll be a whole vigil and all sorts of whatnot all staged for the cameras. Okay. Because Christmas has been under attack by the democratic agenda, and good. we need to steal it back. Good. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, um, if, I'm, if I'm home in time, that'd be great. Awesome. Bring your family out and sing with us. Okay, sounds good. Maybe you sing for several moments with me now? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> What's your favorite, Carol? Uh, I don't have a favorite. I like them all. So. Mine is A Holly Jolly Christmas oh, by Burl Good, good, good. good. Alrighty, well, have a great night. Thanks for calling. I'll see you Christmas Eve. <laughs> bye bye. Does it frighten you that I know your address? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was mildly amusing.
Okay, and we're back. And we got a couple more numbers that we could call. We got um, Lick Dykes and Hollywoods. Hang on. Wait for it. <coughs> Man. That was a uh, Coke Zero burp. There you go. I got there. Coke Zero. That's good stuff. Anyway, um, let me find a song I can play while I call someone it helps. Hello? Hello, how are you doing, dear? This is Mrs. Rosenthal, and I was looking for David and Elizabeth Lechdyke. How did you get this number? And who are you? You live on Stablegate, right? Who are you? I, I also listen. Calm down. Don't get scared. I also live on Stablegate. I'm an 87-year-old woman with throat cancer. And this okay. will probably be my last Christmas. So we're organizing um, a caroling, a mass caroling of everybody who lives on Stablegate Lane. And we're going to march and we're going to sing to everybody. And it'll be, for me, it'll probably be the last time I get to do it. So I'm personally calling to invite everybody. Um, okay, but are you aware there's 10 after 11? I'm, I'm sorry, I've been on the phone all night calling everybody, I didn't realize the time. Okay. Would you like me to call back another time? Um, that's alright, um, who, when, when are you caroling? On Christmas Eve, around 7 p.m. Um, Our we, families and us, we're gonna bundle up and we're gonna go old-fashioned caroling, holding candles and just like in the old days. Okay. I've been the consultant to try to recreate sort of a 1920s feeling. All right, well, thank you for the information, and we'll take it into consideration. Okay, I'll call you back after you talk about it with your family and how wonderful it'll be to go caroling with Jill one last time. Okay, and, and where do you live on Stablegate? I live on Stablegate at number 7927. Oh, okay. Alright, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, my word. This is Faye. I'm listening to the PCU radio. Please leave your message at the tone. Hello, I'm looking for Adelard. This is Lewis from down the street, Lewis Boucher. Adelard Quran? Are you there? Okay, Adelard, um, I, I was at work today, and when I got home, my grandfather, he's a little old and a little senile, but... Hi. He, hi, Grandpa. He came in and he told me that he saw you come into my yard and steal the plastic baby Jesus from our life-size nativity we have on our front lawn. We're saying you, you can keep it. We hate Jesus. Well, actually, it's part of... We don't really... We're not that fond of Jesus, but it's part of the nativity, so if we don't have the whole set, you know, the whole thing is worthless. Yeah, how are we supposed to burn it on Christmas to show how much we hate it? Well, well, we could put a cabbage patch kit or something in there. That's but true. Pretend that's the baby Jesus, but it, it it won't be the same size as everything else in there. It's you know what that's true. Give us back our baby Jesus, damn it! You don't know you don't want to strike that, damn it! God damn it! If you don't give it back, we'll just we'll have to buy another one. Simple as that. <laughs> No, I've got to be Glenn Bell. Glenn Bell. Hello? Hello, is Adolf there? Who is it? This is Glenn Bell. Glenn Bell? Glenn Bell. I'm, I live up the street from you at 2310. Oh. Uh, this is his wife. What do you want? Well, I saw... Well, I was away at work today, and uh, my neighbor, um, Francis, was telling me that... Um, he saw your husband come over to my house and take down my Christmas lights. And I was just wondering if maybe Adolf has a problem with Christmas or something. Uh, and Adolf has been dead for eight years. <laughs> well, I guess he didn't steal my lights. <laughs> who, who in the world told you that? I don't know. You know, I think Francis must, must be playing a joke on me because I come home and my Christmas lights are all gone. Are you, do you live by Murtaugh? Yes, yes, I, I do. Uh, this is yes. my grandfather on the phone. He's he's my witness. 
I, I saw Grandpa, you said that Adolf came and took our lights, and now she's telling me that Adolf isn't even alive for eight years. Nine what you... years ago he did. He what? does it every year. His ghost rises from the grave and, and comes up and steals our lights, damn it. Oh, uh, you must be making this up. Making this up? You think an 80-year-old guy would have a creative <laughs> imagination like this? Well, he's, been, he's dead, I'm sorry, but he... he rises from the grave every year. Nine years ago, he stole our lights. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. <laughs> you, you sound weird. I sound weird? Uh-huh. Have you ever tape-recorded your voice and played it back? That's weird. <laughs> Very nice. And I'm back. <clears throat> we got a couple more numbers in the chat room. Hopefully we can keep on going. Hopefully I can remember the last person that I called. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, how could I forget a name like Lick Dyke? Of course. Of course it was the Lick Dykes. The fa of the famous Lick, Lick Dykes. I don't know. <laughs> Why you want to ask me, darling? PCU Prank Call Underground Radio. Christmas means glittering lights, gaily wrapped gifts. That's right. Uh, Sounds of laughter and good cheer. To the folks at Preparation H, <laughs> it means a time to pause for a few moments. To... <laughs> Hello? Hello, how are you doing? Is this Kathy Hollywood? Yes, it is. Hello, how are you doing, dear? My name is Ed Rosenthal. I live here in the Vista. And I'm calling everyone, all the neighbors, to try to organize a mass caroling of all the neighbors. Okay. So, so far we have about 200 of us signed up, all up and down Country Square Vista. And uh, we're going to go door to door singing like in the old days, holding candles and bundled up. And there's going to be camera crews there and photographers and reporters and all sorts of whatnot. It's grown into this huge thing now. And we'd like to invite you and your family. Okay. Around 7 o'clock p.m. on December the 24th, we're going to gather and we're going to march and sing like the old days. Okay. So can we count you in? Um, I don't know. I'd have to check. You gotta talk to your husband, Britt. Yes. That's what it says here on the paper of all of the neighbors that I have in front of me here. I've been calling everyone all night. I'm sorry to call you so late, but uh, I've been at it all afternoon. Okay, well let me check and um, I'll let you know. Okay, I'll call you back tomorrow. Okay, thank I'll you. I'll call you uh, around this time tomorrow after you talk to Brett about it. Okay. Maybe you come caroling with us. You got any kids? Uh, yes. Well, it would truly be something to remember. Your kids will be on TV. The cameras will be there. You can bundle them up and get them on TV, and that'll be a memory they'll treasure forever. Okay. So you must join us, Kathy. All right, well, let me check. Well, think hard about it, because okay. it'll be a wonderful time that everyone will never ever forget. Okay, thank you. Well, you have a good evening. Does your vagina smell well? On this Christmas Eve, I just want to say, watch out for drunk drivers. And don't pick up anybody who might puke in your cab. Be yes, um, I just called to find out where I can call to find a male stripper. A male stripper? Yeah. You mean somebody take all their clothes off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to call my husband? No. How you get this number? The phone. You try uh, who is this? My name's... How you know my husband? Your husband? <laughs> Your husband. I was calling the entertainment agency. Did somebody tell you this is an entertainment agency? What's his phone number? Well, you doubt that you ought to know what the number be. What man you be calling? I'm not calling a man. I'm calling to find a male stripper. Oh, you need a male stripper to come, like, to a party? Right. 
Oh, girl, I was all mixed up. <laughs> they didn't tell me that. I thought you'd be calling my husband. I no. thought, who is this calling? No, him? no. Uh-huh. All right, girl. Uh, let's see, a male stripper. Uh, now, is this what kind of, is this for Christmas party? Yeah. Well, we have, like, Santa, Elvis. We got an elf. Now, we got Mrs. Claus. I know that sounds crazy, but we do. <laughs> uh, well, now, we do have... Uh, how much money do you have to spend? Because we have a uh, set of midgets, and they be doing it at a discounted rate, but two, they both got to come, though. <laughs> are you kidding me? No, ma'am. Y'all are, like, playing a joke. <laughs> no. We yeah. have all kind of people that work here. All colors, all sizes, shapes. You just have to tell me what it is that you're after. You want just a plain man. I just want a man to, like, come knock on the door and take his clothes off in front of her and embarrass her. I mean, not all of them, just, you know, down to his underwear. Just, yeah, because they really don't want to be taking all their clothes. No, I understand. I don't want them to. So just down to their drawers? Yeah. All righty. Well, let me ask you this. What is your phone number? And I'll be having uh, his name be... Jarrell, and I will have him call you back when he gets back. I can't because my roommate is the one I'm throwing the party for. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, then can you call back? Yeah. All right. Why don't you call us back about 3.30? Okay. And I'll talk to him as soon as he be coming back. Okay. Do you know about how much they run? Oh, it's cheap, girl. It don't cost much. Oh, I think about $30. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah, about 30 Okay. Well, girl, you be calling back, and I'll have somebody talk to you, all right? Okay. Okay, thank you, Doyle. Bye. Bye. By this time, you, uh, you must have received this letter containing your Tuberculosis Association Christmas seals. It's your chance to, to help in this fight, because by buying these seals, you're helping in the war against this disease. Right. And we're back. And that was uh, Bing Crosby with a very important message. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know, I just find them funny. I'm silly like that. We got more numbers coming in. We got, uh... <clears throat> we got more numbers coming in while I'm taking a breather here before we do the next r round of prank calls. And, uh, I thought now would be a good time to get to Buttercup. Has anybody in the uh, chat remi reminded me about Buttercup yet? Oh, no, not yet. Tonight's secret word was buttercup. <laughs> okay, so let me find buttercup so I can play it for you. Totally freaky. <laughs> now you're going to come out for buttercup? Okay, let me pause it then. I'm not even going to set the scene. You just listen to the audio, even out of context. I think it's even better out of context, this audio. This is Buttercup, because tonight's secret word was Buttercup. <laughs> Where's my sound effect? I'm... never mind. You're expecting a drag queen? Her name was Buttercup. I beg your pardon? Oh, listen to sloppy bitch. Maybe you'll learn something. Buttercup was a perfectly normal little eight-year-old girl. Apart from the chronic bedwetting and gender identity issues, which certainly did not constitute a legitimate excuse for her parents to lock her away in that filthy mental institution. Has it caught your attention yet? And <laughs> Buttercup just gets better and better. <clears throat> Pig fuckers. But every cloud has a silver lining, bitch. Because from the first time little Buttercup laid eyes on the well-endowed little Tommy Tucker, she knew she had found her soulmate. Tommy had a reputation as a preteen rapist and murderer. But Buttercup knew he was simply misunderstood. But being a toilet challenge, little mouse like yourself, it took her nearly a decade to confess it. Years of unrequited love, 
an eternity of muffled masturbating with makeshift sex toys not fit for a farm animal. Are you following? It's hard to follow, especially when you're stoned. <laughs> but I love Buttercup. Everybody, every, nobody else is getting this. They're like, wow, this is like just crazy. <laughs> But all that changed the year Buttercup turned 16, down a quart of isopropyl alcohol, and finally got the nerve to confess her love. It was Valentine's Day, as I recall. She spent days constructing a heart-shaped piece of her soul with dried macaroni and hair plucked from her very own scalp. Come on. I'm trying to take a fucking dump! <laughs> I love Buttercup. When, when I'm done playing, I'll, I'll tell you what movie you can go find this outtake from. It's not even in the movie. It's one of the outtakes on the DVD, but I thought it was brilliant. Oh, yeah. Buttercup's fingers trembled as she slipped her little masterpiece into Tommy's hand. But instead of a reciprocation of undying love, her little valentine was met with a stringy stream of drool. Her eyes darted up to a patch of shaved scalp where jagged stitches taunted her like a botched sex change. A lobotomy, bitch! The sparkle in little Tommy's eyes had been replaced by the catatonic stare of a horse um retard. If only Buttercup had told Tommy sooner, maybe she wouldn't have spent a lifetime with her lips wrapped around a bottle. <laughs> maybe she could have afforded a proper pussy. <laughs> Isn't this great? It's long. It's like four minutes long. But I find it brilliant. I'll set the scene for you. There's a guy trying to take a leak in a urinal, and this crazy person just walks in, locks the door, and just goes off on this rant, like right next to him while he's like sitting there at the urinal. <laughs> because let's face it, bitch. Little buttercup. The slob. Sloppy needs cock. Sloppy wants a pussy. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> and that's the end of the scene. He finally, after four minutes, like runs from the room screaming. <laughs> so if you want to watch that movie, it's uh, it's called Another Gay Movie. It's uh, basically like a gay American Pie movie. It's like a sex comedy, but it's like all gay guys. And like a couple of really ugly lesbians, <laughs> like bull bikes. Well, there's some hot. The lesbian has some hot uh, chippies on the side. The bull bike. Yeah, but like the, yeah, but the, the actual bull dyke is pretty disgusting. Uh, yeah. Well, I think she's like a famous like dyke comedian. I didn't know there was that whole realm of comedy, but there is. It's like dyke and and fag comedy. <laughs> And I've listened to it before, and I don't find any of it funny. No, I don't either. It's... I try to listen to Serious Out Q. There's this one show that I like on Serious Out Q called Derek and Romaine. And I find it hard to listen to because the guy is just such a stereotype. And I don't buy that that's a real behavior. I don't know. Do I sound like that? Do I sound like one of the flamers that's on Serious Out Q? Well, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I don't like that. And Ant is probably the most famous. He's in this movie, another gay comedy. And I pranked him, or I pranked a jilted ex-lover of his or something. I don't know what the fuck was up with that. I, don't, I think the verdict is still out on that one. Ant says it wasn't him, and he doesn't know who it was. But this is somebody who obviously knew him like he, he had lived at this place. That's why we had the phone number there.
So maybe he wasn't there anymore, but they knew who he was. So I don't know their relation to him, but I pranked them. And he's in this movie, and I listened to his comedy, and I saw him on Last Comic Standing, and he sucks. He's not funny. He's got like five, six jokes. He tells them over and over all the fucking time. He never comes up with new material, and when he does, it sucks. Gay comedy really sucks. And he's a hero like me. <laughs> oh, to get into stand up. I'll get up. I'll get into stand up and I'll go on stage and uh, talk about nigger, nigger, nigger. <laughs> That's all you would have to do to become a world famous stand up comedian. All you would have to do is go to an open mic night and show up and just go nigger, 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 nigger. And then the next day the video is all over the place and people try to kill you after the show. During the show, they jump, they rush the stage, they pummel you with a microphone stand. <laughs> <clears throat> but I I don't want to go the nigga 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 route. <laughs> Are you stoned? So my I did a, a few uh, mildly amusing prank calls. But you now you now you know what I'm thinking. I think I'm rather be I think I've, I <laughs> I think I'm too stoned to do the show anymore. And I think I'd rather be playing Final Fantasy XII. So that means it's the end of the show. But at least I came up for a little while, and I did like five or six prank calls. So hopefully uh, everybody doesn't feel gypped that I'm going off after like, well, it's almost a hundred minutes. It's not too shabby. Well, I want to play my game. <laughs> I have needs. <laughs> Oh man, I'm a funny motherfucker. <clears throat> Maybe I'm thinking about it all wrong. Maybe I need to contact Sirius OutQ. Try to get a show with them. <laughs> Try to be like their non faggy representative. The buys are not represented on uh, Sirius OutQ. You got bull dykes and flaming fags and. Every time I listen to the station, it's some guy who's talking like this. I was like, hey. It sells. No, I don't think so. I bet at any given time there's no more than 100 people listening. <laughs> we probably got more people listening right now than listen to Sirius Outkill. Even gay people are like, oh, that's stupid. <laughs> Except I like Derek and Romain because they're funny, but I can't stand his stereotypical behavior. I think it sets the movement back a decade. <laughs> oh, I think I'm funnier when I'm stoned. Well, I, I do agree with you, though, but I don't, I don't, I think, like, being flaming, you know, for, for a radio show, being flaming is more of a... It's something you think it's a character he does? Well, he's certainly not helping. No, no, I, I, <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced he walks around in public. Yeah, right? yeah, so am I. I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't care. They don't know gay. <laughs> Those are people who have a mental problem. I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. So, what should I play to say goodnight to the fine people who tuned in and listened tonight? I can play... Um, I actually do have outro sound effects, believe it or not. Hooray on a holiday. There's no better way to express the spirit of Christmas than United States saving bonds. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're making savings bonds a part of your Christmas too. He puzzled and puzzled till his puzzle of a saw. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. 
And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. You listen live. You listen live. You listen live. Chat again. And listen live. You 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 listen live. Get drunk with KDK every Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on PCU, Prank Call Underground Internet Radio. I don't even know who he is. <laughs>